Barbed wire is one of those simple inventions that, at first glance, may seem without much historical importance, but in practice, it had a tremendous impact on the development of our society, mainly in the history of private property due to its crucial role in expanding cattle ranching and agriculture to the western United States, famously known as the Old West, in addition to being a story full of curiosities. Smooth wire had already been manufactured since the Middle Ages using hot iron that was drawn to produce small pieces of malleable wire, a technique that was refined over the years, enabling the availability of relatively smooth, high-quality wires in various dimensions on the market by around 1870. However, these smooth wires were not so good for use as fences to contain animals or protect property from intruders. So, until that point, the most commonly employed techniques for marking boundaries and safeguarding properties were primarily the construction of stone fences, the planting of thorny bushes, and the building of wooden fences. Solutions that were generally expensive and laborious, better suited for small European properties but impractical for the vast new properties being established in America, spanning hundreds of hectares. Someone needed to create a more effective solution for this. Fortunately, where there's a problem, there's often someone thinking about how to solve it. And in this case, there were numerous individuals, each with their version of a fence. To give you an idea, between 1867 and 1874, there were over 200 patents registered just in the United States, with the first patent being filed by Lucian B. Smith of Ohio in 1867 and granted in 1876, leading many to assert that he was the inventor of the said fence. This leads to a fence dispute involving the defenders of Michael Kelly of Illinois, who filed a patent application the following year, in 1868, but which had supposedly been developed since 1863. However, the most familiar version of barbed wire, which became a commercial success, would only be patented a few years later by another inventor. In 1873, a New York professor named Joseph Glidden, who had acquired a farm in Illinois, was visiting a local fair when he came across a fence model patented by Henry M. Rose. It was a wooden device with sharp points designed to be attached to an existing fence. An innovative idea, but unfortunately, it wasn't generating many orders. Glidden didn't buy the fence either, but he took part of the idea with him. The main challenge was to create a fence that could delimit the property and contain the animals through pain, without seriously injuring them. But this fence also needed to be easy to install and, most importantly, feasible for large-scale production to make it more affordable. It took months of thinking and testing ideas until he arrived at a design with two wires twisted together to secure the barbs in place. An idea he patented in 1874, following numerous legal battles involving hundreds of other inventors of similar fences. You might be thinking, that's it, end of the story, just manufacture and sell. Well. It wasn't quite that simple. Despite it being a simple concept today, back then, this invention sparked a lot of controversy. In the first demonstrations and attempts to sell barbed wire fences, the cattle that advanced onto them ended up getting injured, creating such negative publicity that it led to a halt in sales, a scenario reinforced by criticism from American natives who referred to the invention as the devil's rope because it ensnared on the fur of the bison, who, if they did not die of hunger or thirst, died from infections caused by the barbs. Moreover, cowboys opposed its use fearing job loss, as the fence reduced the need for cowboys to oversee and herd cattle. They also argued that the fences restricted the movement of cattle, hindering trade. Land and water that were once open to all became to be fenced off by rural landowners, leading to numerous conflicts between cowboys and farmers. In addition, it disrupted the movement of wild animals, preventing them from reaching water sources and food. Public opinion began to shift only when barbed wire salesmen entered the scene, demonstrating how cheap and quickly one could build a fence with it, even more so in places like this, where there were few trees available for the construction of wooden fences. They also began conducting public demonstrations by confining young cattle and other non-domesticated animals in a corral fenced with barbed wire, a task it performed quite effectively actions that ended up generating positive publicity among the majority of new farmers, boosting sales. And the timing couldn't have been more opportune for this. Do you remember this image? It represents the westward expansion of the United States. In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln sanctioned the Homestead Act, 
which aimed to colonize the lands in the American West, or, depending on one's perspective, to take these lands from the local Native American populations. The law stated that any citizen had the right to claim up to 160 hectares of land, as long as they built a house and cultivated the land for at least five years. A law that could only be effective with the use of barbed wire fences, which in addition to being quick to implement, prevented cattle from escaping and land invasion by Native American peoples. A law that also helped boost sales at Joseph Glidden's factory, which by 1878 had already manufactured around 420,000 kilometers of barbed wire. Enough to circle the earth ten times and make him a millionaire, turning him into a baron of wire. After that, the use of barbed wire extended to a multitude of applications that I will leave for you to comment on some of them here in the video. Thank you for your company, and until next time.